guys, it's Lisa here. I hope you're well. Today is Sunday the 10th of March and it's just gone 11 o'clock in the morning so I've had a bit of a lazy start so far so I thought right I've not recorded anything for over a week. Probably need to touch base with you guys and I haven't diamond painted in a little while either. In fact my last diamond paint with me was gosh Back in November, I think, last year, so I've not done anything in about four months on this with you. So I thought, right, we'll have a bit of a diamond painting session today. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll zoom you in a little bit further. This is my progress so far. And, um, yeah, you can, you can spend a little bit of time with me. I'll see you in a moment. So what I've done is skipped quite a few um, squares along here just so I can get to a section of of solid colour it just it's just a little bit easier when you're trying to film um, either a stitch with me or a diamond paint with me to have a decent run of colour to go at otherwise it's just really tricky when you're trying to count all the time um, so if you've got a piece where you're doing a lot of colour changes it's nigh on impossible to be able to count and coordinate that at the same time. So this is why I'm doing this. Um, as you are aware, I'm working on my Heaven and Earth design piece. This is um, The Witching Hour by Lisa Parker. Um, obviously, I've had this on my um, drafting table for quite some time now. I've not really made any significant progress on it. So, in my last stitching update, I mentioned about you know some focus pieces and I chose three of them which I referred to as the big three which is obviously this. There is also my Chris Ortega Steam Heart which is another heaven and earth which I'm stitching. That is part of the big three and also my new Chatelain as well. So they're the three. Um, the Chris Ortega um, is getting quite a lot of love this, this month so far so Steam Heart has been worked on quite heavily at the moment which is which is good, so I'm making some decent progress. And for those of you who've been following me, I've kind of got off that background bit and I'm now back on working on her again, which is which is nice because I felt as I had to get that background done. Because the problem is, is if I don't stitch on the background and, and sort of work on that and just stitch on her, then I'll never do the background, I'll never finish it if I do her face and her first, because obviously that's the best bit. So you kind of have to you know, do the do the rest of it as well <laughs> with those pieces because I mean the background on the heaven and earth does make such a difference but for anybody who stitches the big ones um, you'll kind of know what I mean about the background and um, how uninteresting that becomes after a few pages but you know it's essential. So yeah so I thought I'd spend a bit of time with you doing this. Um, I do have a tag, it's an interesting tag actually. Um, I googled funny YouTube tags and this came up and it's not quite that as funny as I would have liked it to have been. There's some serious topics in it and I thought, ah, do you know what, that might sort of, I don't know, um, add a little bit of interest to, to, the, um, to, the, to the diamond paint with me as we go. But in terms of life update, you know, it's been a week, um, you know, the usual work, busy, it's been good, I've had a good week of work, a lot has happened in the space of a short time and I've managed to successfully recruit for all the empty positions in my team so now i have back up to full capacity so there's a couple of guys who will be joining me next month, new people um, who will be going on our training courses and yeah, becoming part of the, the dream team so um, yeah so that's good. And uh, yeah, I met with my boss on Friday morning early up in Newcastle and she is over the moon with me in terms of how I'm working, you know, um, obviously I, I did very well um, for year end in terms of um, pay rise and things like that for this next coming financial year. So obviously I was um, one of her two top performers, I don't know whether I was the top performer or the second one but either way. There's a lot of very established managers in, in my management team and, you know, to be up in the top two, um, you know, I never expected to be there ever um, because, you know, the guys are just so good. So it's, it's a real privilege. So I'm happy with, with that. So she's, she's over the moon and has no qualms about me, which is great. So it's all good. It's all a happy place. Um, 
Monday come in, um, I mentioned to you quite a while ago that I've been selected to become a master coach. <laughs> so we have a new um, style of, it's called leadership conversations and it's, um, I've mentioned it before, it's an American um, group who work as part of the Harvard, Harvard Business Group and um, it's, it's around just different ways of phrasing things and, and the way you go about having conversations whether it's to do with performance or any issue, any conversation you want to have, it could be a difficult conversation, it could be um, you know getting your one of your direct reports to the next level, you know improvements, um, you know, it could it could be relation to anything, even to give positive feedback. It's a mechanism to do that and a way of a model basically of doing that. So on Monday, I, I'm running my first coaching circle, which involves uh, four of the other managers dialing in, and then we'll do like role play scenarios of somebody's issue that they have with this one is with their t one of their team members, um, one of their direct reports. And um, yeah, we'll come to um, you know a solution, and you know give give that person some advice, and you know collectively as a group come up with a strategy um, for that particular scenario. So I'm doing that on Monday afternoon. So I'm a little bit nervous about that, to be honest. I mean, it should it should be good. It should all be good. But you know, when you're just doing something a little bit different, and it's with your peer group. Again, um, obviously this year I've had, last year rather, and into this year I've had a lot of opportunity to to lead my peer group. So, sorry, this I, Kindle's just crashed again. Let me just um, get back in. I was just highlighting the sections I've worked on and it doesn't, it doesn't like it sometimes. It depends what mood it's in, I think. Uh, so I'm just working out where I'm going to go next. So I'm just going to do that and then continue. So yeah, so it's always a little bit, not tricky, but I don't know, a little bit more difficult to, to, to lead your own peer group. It's easier to lead your direct reports because they're expecting you to lead them. Um, but this is, it's more leadership without authority when it's at your level and above. So it just makes it that little bit more challenging, doesn't it? But it's all good. It's all great. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Fitness is going really well. I'm still continuing to lose weight on a nice steady state so far. Um, over the time I've been sort of on Weight Watchers, which is now WW, and then thrashing the Peloton platform. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I've lost nearly a stone so far, so I'm absolutely delighted with the way that that's progressing, like seriously over the moon. Um, it, was, it was long overdue and absolutely necessary that I did I did lose some weight, um, so yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. My clothes um, are, fit, are fitting better. A lot of the clothes I was wearing last year don't fit me anymore. They're too big, so I'm going to lose probably about another half a stone, and then I'm going to take myself clothes shopping and treat myself and, and get some nice things. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not like a beast for you know by any standards, but you know yourself, don't you, when you're starting to be a little bit uncomfortable. And um, you need to lose it. So that's going really well. I'm loving the Peloton platform. So I'm doing quite a lot of spinning. Um, I did a 45 minute spin, which is the longest one I've done yesterday. And I quite literally thought I might die when I got off the bike. Um, and I was, honestly, I was exhausted, but it was so good. It was such an achievement. So like the 20 minutes, half an hour session should feel like nothing moving forwards. So, um, so yeah, that's the life update. Nothing, ex you know, extravagantly new. Um, I'm doing like a checkerboard style with this. If you've noticed, I'm kind of doing one, miss one, and I'm going back and filling them in. This I found just helps the diamonds just to sit that little bit better. I've also recently had some questions around, um, you know, where I got this from, how much it cost. So there is an upload, which I will link below, about how I went about sorting this kit out and then the kit unboxing as well. So I'll link that for you below in case you didn't see that. But this came from Smith Speeds in the UK. So basically, I messaged them through Facebook, told them which kit I wanted to do, which version of it. And then they quoted me and went away and sent off, probably more likely than not, to China 
for the supplies and then sent it all out with the correct size canvas and then obviously all of the drills that you needed to complete it of which I've just built about 200 of my um, black drills before I came online so I need to go and pick all them up <laughs> at the end of filming so I'm just marking off some more stitches up here which is oh it's crashed again it's having a crashy day come on Kindle behave just work out where I need to be next so so yeah so all in all because um, this is a question I get asked quite a bit as well the total of the entire kit with all the drills and the canvas was £52 which I thought was was good value. Yes, you can get you know kits from China directly, really really cheap. <coughs> um, but you know I don't I don't want to get into you know copyright problems. You know I think that if an artist has gone to the trouble to design a kit, then you know it's only fair that I should pay for my pattern, which I did do and um, you know get somebody to kit, kit it up for me ethically I um, you know I, I don't feel the need where I have to you know go to China get a rip off heaven and earth design pattern I just it just wouldn't sit very well with me to be honest so I went this route and and obviously the difference with this type of thing is that you don't get the printed canvas you obviously get a blank canvas and then you just follow the heaven and earth pattern as you would if you were stitching it which I like that process anyway so that I don't mind you know yes you it would be a lot quicker to if you've got the you know the imprint of the symbol you know on the on the design yes it makes the process a lot faster don't get me wrong because you're not having to constantly cross reference with the pattern but you know you run into the ethics of um you know, potentially buying something that, you know, the artist isn't getting credit for or financial credit for. And, you know, I don't like that particularly, but, you know, each to their own. But, you know, to be fair as well, when I've been on the, um, you know, the, the sites on AliExpress and things like that, I've never seen this. So I'm assuming that nobody's ever asked them to to kit it up for them and, and they've done it that way where they've, you know, sent the guys at AliExpress the pattern across from heaven and earth. I've not seen it. I've seen many others that I recognise on AliExpress. Um, but, you know, I guess it's, you know, what sits with you um, on that level. And, you know, I'm not criticising anybody who, who does that at all. So really don't think that's, that's the case. It's just my own personal, my own personal view on it. But anyway, enough about that. I um, have a tag. So I googled um, yesterday when I was thinking about doing this video. Oh, damn things crashed again. Sorry. <laughs> Let me just go back in. It's not, it's not having fun. You know, I stitched for quite a while on the steam heart piece last night. Didn't crash once. And then you go through phases where it just, every time you try to highlight a row, it doesn't like it. Um, but anyway, so I googled funny tags and you know because I thought oh let's just bring a little bit of humour um, to the day and we'll do this we'll, we'll do it like a funny one like a jokey one and um, yeah there was a few but you know it's just like it's a bit generic I think I've probably answered most of the types of questions that were in it to death anyway and then there was this one at the bottom of the page which I thought I wouldn't define that as as funny <laughs> There's quite a few serious questions and I'm not going to do them all in the interest of time but I just thought, you know what, I think it might be a little bit thought provoking in terms of some of the types of questions that are in it and I guess it would get, you know, it got, it got me thinking some of the questions, I've had like a skim over them but also it probably, it'll get everybody thinking about how they would answer it so I thought that's probably quite a good one to do. So first question is do you think you were old-fashioned um, I guess to a certain extent yes a little bit um, you know I suppose if you look at relationships it's very very rare that I would ever approach somebody and you know ask them on a date I, I like the men to ask me um, which I suppose 
it's not often the way it goes, you know, from a modern perspective, you know. I know it's equal rights for women and all of that. And obviously this week it was International Women's Day and, you know, I'm all for equality. But when it comes to things like that, I quite, I quite like a little bit of chivalry. If that doesn't make me old fashioned, then I don't know what does, um, you know. I mean, you know, you know, you know me anyway, or I think you've got a good understanding of me. You know, I'm very, very independent. Um, you know, from you know, from from a man. You know, I don't need um, you know a man to justify my existence or you know provide financially for me. You know, I never wanted to be in a position where I had to stay with somebody because I couldn't afford to live on my own. You know, that was that would be my biggest idea of, of hell personally and you know to to get myself into a position where I don't have to have that I guess doesn't make me old-fashioned really I think that's probably the reverse you know because I am very independent um fashion wise no you know I like to be you know relatively trendy I mean some of the trends that are out there at the minute I wouldn't wear but yeah I think I think from a you know romantic um relationship perspective I am very old-fashioned like I wouldn't go online dating I mean at the minute I'm single happily single I would not go online dating I've got quite a few friends who are on what we have in the UK called tinder again I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do that um you know we've got you know platforms like that that, that just doesn't appeal to me you know if I haven't met them or know of them or being introduced to them by you know friends then I, I wouldn't just turn up to a bar and meet a guy who I've been chatting with online that just isn't going to happen to me so if that means that I'm going to stay single for the rest of my life then <laughs> I'm staying single guys it's as simple as that um, but yeah I, I, I guess I am and then obviously if I did meet somebody I like to get to know people on like a you know, a personal level before, you know, I would want to ever get intimate with them in any shape or form whatsoever. I know some people don't really mind about that. They will sleep with people on the first date. That isn't me either. So, you know, I'm not that kind of person either, you know. So, so I guess really, yes, I am a little bit old fashioned, but more when it comes to, you know, relationships and, and things like that. So I've just blocked off um, some more stitches. I'm just seeing where I am on this um, thing here. I'm just wondering whether or not to move us up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to readjust the camera and I will be right back in a moment. There we go. I'm just going to work myself onto this next block of 10 there. Then come too far down the page. I think I don't want to end up exposing a load of the sticky plastic oh gosh my um little blue tack plugs just come out of the pen let me just bung that back in getting pen so next question is love with heartbreaks or no love at all <coughs> oh gosh it's got to be love with heartbreaks um you know i think you know a lot about my history um when it comes to relationships and stuff i am not great i have to say um you know, from a relationship perspective, obviously, as you know, I'm divorced and um, I've had a series of relatively long term relationships that have amounted to nothing, um, which, you know, it doesn't, it, that doesn't bother me. You know, I don't mind. I think every, every situation is put in your way in life for a reason. I think people come in and out of your life for a reason. I'm a big believer in fate. Um, and, the, and the older I've got, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. The older I've got, the more I continue to believe that more. I really do. I mean, I'm not saying that our lives are, are preordained and there's, you know, uh, but, but I do think, you know, I know you make a lot of your own luck and you make a lot of decisions. Um, you know, and there was, I did a tag a while ago around parallel universes and, you know, it was it was asking a question around that and how potentially somebody else is living your life but taking the opposite decisions to what you do. And, um, yeah, I don't know whether I believe that. <laughs> but I, I just think that, 
you know, maybe we are meant to experience certain things. So, yes, I would rather have um, heartbreak and experience those feelings and than not ever have put myself out there enough to you know to, to have my heart broken I would I would I would always pick love with heartbreak anytime over nothing um but definitely and and you know I look back to how I am now as a person and how relationships you know whether they're of a romantic nature or a friendship nature or whatever they've been and how they shape your life and your thinking yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change anything that's gone on in my life. I really wouldn't. From that perspective, I think it's so important um, that you have that. I've just noticed that this is a little bit out of focus. Bear with me while I just try and adjust and bring that camera in a little bit further, just to get you a better picture if I can. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm trying not to make you feel seasick. That's a little bit better. We'll go with that. So yes, definitely love with heartache. Um, let me just see where I'm going to fill in the rest of these so I don't go awry. Um, the next question is, um, which do you prefer, trust or love? Why? Hmm. I'm trying to think about this. So, tr trust is really, really important to me. You know, from a personal to professional level. So, let me give you an example of this. So, I obviously am a line manager to ten sales representatives who live across the whole of the northeast Yorkshire. Humber down to North Lincolnshire. So that's the size of my region. So all of Yorkshire. So we talk West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, East Riding, um, across to Hull, and then down to Gr Scunthorpe, Grimsby. So that's my sort of domain, really. I obviously remotely manage them. I do spend a day with each of them usually every two weeks. But other than that, those guys are left, not to their own devices because there's the phone and I do speak to them and we check in and, and stuff like that. But those guys are pretty much left to their own devices on a daily basis. So I really do have to trust the fact that they're going to go out every day to work because, you know, with that type of job, yes, there are certain things that we're looking for from like a metrics perspective. Um, in and around activity rates, contact rates with customers and things like that. But, you know, I, I don't see them every day. I don't know what time they get up out of bed and, and go off and start the job or what time they go home. I know how hard I work. You know, do my team work as hard as me? Oh God, absolutely not. They just do their day job. I know how hard they work. I've done that job before. Do you know what I mean? All of my team's job I've done. So I know... It's not the hardest job in the world that they do and they get incredibly well paid for it, let's just say. So, you know, there is a massive element of trust within my work life when it comes to me trusting the team and I will trust them wholeheartedly until I have a reason not to. And, you know, inevitably and sadly, many of them over time have given me reason not to trust them. I'm in a situation at the moment with one of my one of my team members who I will have to put on some short-term measures because his activity rate is absolutely diabolical and it's inexcusable. There's absolutely no excuse and in my mind I'm thinking that individual isn't going out to work properly every day and I am, I am right. Um, you know when I'm with him in the car he doesn't know all of the routes to his surgeries um, you know, there's, you know, so these appointments and things like that. I mean, you just know, don't you, with people. He's just not out there every day. If he was, he'd know his journey map better. He'd know where he was taking me better. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just really obvious. And, you know, I'm nobody's fool. I've seen, I've seen everything. 
you know, in my in my career, I really have you know all sorts of dishonesty and lies, and and people who are just you know not what they try to portray. So yeah, I would say trust, and then I think of my friends as well. Yeah, you know, from that perspective, I I would take trust over love anytime, and I feel as though that quality in somebody in a way out outmeasures love. Um, you know, if you think of even personal relationships, I would have to trust a person long before I fell in love with them. And once the trust was gone in a relationship and I've been there and I know how that feels, um, the love goes with it. So you almost can't have one without the other in a way. And trust is the bigger thing. So yes, trust. <laughs> is my roundabout way of answering that. And then the next question, I mean, this is a bit of a no-brainer, really, and I don't even know why it's there, but, you know, when you think, well, would you not, um, is would you save the life of a homeless person? And why or why not? Yeah, of course I would save the life of a homeless person. And, and I can't, to be honest, you know, when you sort of look at it, you think, well, why wouldn't you um, save the life of a homeless person? I don't know. I mean... <sighs> You know, people have their own story in life, you know, people come to, you know, being homeless for all sorts of different reasons, you know, you know, there is this sort of cynical attitude, sorry, I'm just marking off the stitch, uh, not the stitches, the, the drills, I'm just marking off the pattern, just so I don't get lost. There are some cynical people who think, oh yeah, they're homeless because they're too lazy to work or they don't want to get a job. You know, I mean, God, uh, yes, you, there might be people in that situation who can't afford rent because they don't want to work. But, you know, a lot of people have a story and, you know, a lot of homelessness is linked to mental health. You know, a lot of these people have been highly functioning members of society for many, many years and then have just, for whatever, had mental breakdowns, you know, relationship breakdowns that have just push them over the edge, leading them to not be able to function in the way that society dictates we should. And, you know, the life just unravels and they end up in situations where, you know, they don't have a home. You know, they're not all there to, you know, sort of sponge off society. You know, there was a programme on Panorama years ago about, and that followed people who were pretending to be homeless and then we're going and getting in their cars and, and driving off to their big houses and, and they were just literally fleecing members of the public. You know, I don't think that that happens very often. I honestly don't think that people who sit on a pavement with a tin, you know, begging you for your small change have a Porsche around the corner that they're going to drive in, to, you know, drive home in, go and get a shower in the luxury mansion and then have a swim in their pool. I just don't think... <laughs> that, that, you know, guys and, and ladies who are in that situation have that luxury. I wish they did. I wish they did. Um, but absolutely, I would save the life of a homeless person. I just think that's probably one of the most insane questions I've ever, I've ever seen on a tag, to be honest. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I've just lost track of where I am. Bear with. Let me just find the page I need to be on. This stupid thing is just had a, a moment. Yeah, this is like a, a whole new, isn't it, thing of technology. I know people love paper, paper patterns. You know, I understand why you do. <laughs> Let me just check I'm still in frame. No, I won't be if I move on. I'm just going to alter the camera angle again. Bear with me. Consciously always aware of where I am because there's nothing worse um, if you're watching a diamond paint or a stitch with me and then you know, the person who's doing it has realised, or hasn't realised rather, that they're not even in shot. Um, you know, I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? I think, you know, when we're watching these things anyway, more often than not, we've got our head down doing our own thing, whether it's stitching or diamond painting anyway, don't we? So it doesn't matter too much, but I prefer, you can see at least. <laughs> so next question, what have we got? Um, here's what if you could wish anything or do anything what would it be oh what would I wish 
would I do? I I would like to to do charity work and I know you don't have to retire to do that I know you can volunteer um, I just don't have an awful lot of time in my life and I know I could probably go and do volunteer work rather than you know bother with a YouTube channel for example I could do that and I have thought about it I've thought about going and working in one of the local food banks and just putting in a couple of hours even if it's a couple of hours a week in there just to support the work that they do um, you know I would love to do that and I've always said if I win the lottery I'll not be one of those people who sit on a beach doing nothing and you know on my island um, next door to Richard Branson <laughs> I would go off and do things in life um, you know to support so I'm really big on you know the planet and the environment and things like that I would want to go and work I think with definitely with animals and with children without a doubt you know the underprivileged and animals in need and things like that you know what I'm like I'm a sucker for animals absolute sucker I mean I live with four lovebirds and a dog I mean I think that probably tells you that so I would like to do that um, so that's what I would like to do I would like to do more charitable work if I could wish anything oh, just wish for all the like the darkness that we have that surrounds us I know this sounds really melodramatic and it's not meant to but you know when you just feel I I don't listen to the news very much at all because in a way I, I try it's such a dark what the tellers I mean I don't believe half of what the tellers anyway but what comes out of the TV when the news is on so much is so much darkness is like a thrust on us you know obviously there's so much darkness in the world and I don't know if 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 anything I just wish that the world itself could just be a more unified place and there wasn't all of the drama we have and issues because I find myself sometimes you know passing comments about certain things I'm not going to say what because I just don't want to get into that kind of argument but there's a lot going on whether or not you look at the UK politics at the minute or you look at you know what's going on in the rest of the world I find myself being drawn into things and having opinions on things in such a way that I wish I didn't and I'll catch myself thinking I can't believe you've just thought that or you know that's even entered your mind but if I hadn't have watched the news or subjected myself to that I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought that because I wouldn't have known about it do you know what I mean am I making sense I just I just wish there was more lightness in the world and less issues and I just wish people were kinder to each other you know and it's like the small things I'll give you a really really small example I mean and this you know isn't even like a big drama so you know say for example you know YouTube even like I don't get an awful lot of negativity on my channel I really really don't there's only one person who's ever come after me on YouTube and I, I told you about that and I just blocked that person straight off the left a really really nasty comment and I thought well there we go sorry about that and um, my memory card was full so I just had to delete some <laughs> some things off it um, and whilst I did it I thought right well I'll just move the camera angle and carry along so I'm getting right near to the end of the page now which is literally over here there's like how many 30 odd um, like stitches or drills to go in and then I'm at the edge of the top of the page that's fab that I've almost gone across the top I mean it's shameless for the amount of time I've had this and as I said it is a focus piece so you know I am planning on rectifying that but I was saying before my camera rudely interrupted me about negativity and I was just starting you know on the story and it's like minor compared to what's going on in the rest of the world about the person um, who I had to block you know, it just makes me laugh. You know, 
I'm a tiny, tiny channel. Do you know what I mean? In the grand scheme of things, I'm a tiny channel. You know, my channel is growing at a nice, steady rate. You know, it, it, it's doing okay. Am I ever going to be making money out of it? No, because we were, we, you know, we, we are uploading in such a niche area. Do you know what I mean? We're doing cross stitch and diamond painting. I'm not doing, um, oh, I don't know, beauty or stuff like that. That's not my bag. So I'm never going to have millions of subscribers. It's never going to happen. Do you know what I mean? And I don't, I don't care, you know. But for people to, you know, come at you and then, you know, then give you a thumbs down for your video. I mean, I don't, I actually don't care enough. I mean, I've never, ever given anybody a thumbs down for an upload that they've done. Just never have. If, if I don't like what they've got to say, or I don't like what they're doing, or, do you know what I mean, they trigger me in some way whatsoever, you know, and it could be something minor, I'll just click off it and, you know, if it, if they ever come up in my recommendation, sorry, I was going to take that off, it's a tiny diamond and it's not a good shape, you know, if they ever come up in my recommendations again, I'd just, like, never watch them, you know, I just don't see the point um, in in passing that negativity on to somebody, you know, because you think it might hurt them a little bit. I mean, I couldn't give a monkey's toss. Do you know what I mean? I really couldn't. You know, if I get a hundred thumbs down, you know, I really don't care. It's not going to stop me uploading. It's not going to stop me interacting with you guys. You know, I get far more thumbs up than I do thumbs down for it to even, for me to even bat an eyelid. I mean, what would be great is if people explained why they were giving you a thumbs down and then at least if you were doing something that was fundamentally wrong, you know, you could rectify it. But of course, they're not going to do that, are they? Because they're going to do it anonymously just because they can give you a bit of a kick in the teeth, even it's a small kick in the teeth. Um, and they can do it anonymously and you would, you know, you would never know who it was. But it's just, you know, that's a small thing and it's just a tiny example. But that's what I mean. Why do people... Why are people so, you know, I'm trying to think of a word to describe it, nasty, you know, and mean. And these are, you know, not even people who should really have an axe to grind. I mean, a lot of people in our community are lovely, you know, they really are. Um, you know, and I know people stumble upon videos and things appear in people's recommended list and you're like why is this being sent to me do you know what I mean why is this recommended for me it's really not something I'm actually interested in but you know I, I don't know I just I just think why why do that um you know but that's a tiny thing and as I said it doesn't affect me it doesn't stop me doing it but it was just like a small example of people passing darkness and negativity your way so if there was any way I could stop that on any level whether it's to do with you know worldwide issues or just like people just generally you know hating on other people for no reason whatsoever I would I would do something about it that would be my wish just to make the world a better place um you know and heal the world we can get into Michael Jackson realms there can't we but then there's a whole other topic area which I'm not even going to go on after this week um in the UK but again you know a whole load of darkness being admitted from the TV at us um you know from that 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 um documentary that aired in the UK for two nights this week um and I'm not going to even say anything about that anyway moving on um are you the type of friend you would like to have as a friend um, well, I've got friends, so I'm assuming they must like me a bit. Um, yes, and no. So, yes, from the point of view that I am, you know, very loyal, I'll have everybody's back that, that I can. Um, I really, really do. So, if I'm your friend, I'm your friend. And, you know, I'll be loyal to you and I'll be your friend for as long as you want me in your life for or whatever that means you know what I mean I really will um, I really value friendship um, and I say no from the point of view of time time constraints and time factors particularly for me 
um, I don't have an awful lot of time so if there are I don't know plans or situations that are happening it's often a case that I can't go or do whatever it is because I'm working so I become not a problem to people because people just don't really bother that much but I'm, I'm not as as available to people as I would like to be um, you know if there's ever a crisis or a problem with my friends I, I'm there for them 100% and I'll help and advise them in any way I can I've got a couple of friends at the minute who are going through you know really difficult relationship problems and absolutely my door is open for them anytime and they know that and you know they'll they'll reach out to me as and when but you know I don't think I'm as available for people as I would like to be and even my family you know um, I'm not as available as I would like to be you know even for my parents you know I think they know that during the week I'm pretty much not, not even you know up for a visit or you know gonna do very much because because of my job and oh Daisy Oh, blimey, sorry, Daisy's just broken wind. Oh my God, I gave her an egg for her breakfast this morning. We had um, fried egg. Um, I had a slice of toast because, you know, I haven't had a slice of bread in a long time. You know, you just fancy one and it's four Weight Watchers points for a slice, so I had it. Um, so I did Daisy an egg with her meal and she's in a bed next to me here just so I can keep it quiet while I do this. And, ooh, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, from a loyalty perspective I'm a great friend, from an availability perspective I'm not such a great friend um, and I think people who, you know, I'm on Instagram with, you know, through this, um, you know, I don't always get back to people as quick as I would like or things get missed and it's not because, you know, I'm, I'm being rude and I don't want to message you back or whatever, it's, I've just filled a thing in that I didn't mean to. That needs to be, there's one brown tile in that massive black there, typical heaven and earth. It'll make all the difference, I tell you, it really will when it's done, but at the time you just wish you could just put a black tile in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, next question, is money the real source of happiness? What makes you happy? Okay, that's an interesting one. What makes me happy is seeing other people happy and I don't know, just being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. So if I want to diamond paint and stitch all day like I'm going to do for the vast majority of it today, I can do it. So I guess what that means is my independence allows me to do whatever I want. and my independence stems from the fact that I can support myself. So that then links into money, doesn't it? Because if you can't, um, you know, then that limits you to what's available. I'm not saying I could go out and buy everything because I can't, do you know what I mean? I have, you know, I'm, I'm okay in terms of what I can do. Rockefeller I'm not. And, you know, over the last few months, I have really started to think about the possibility of really wanting to take as early retirement as I can. And obviously, I haven't made a whole lot of provi provision for myself for that. Do you, do you know what I mean? So now I'm thinking, I'm just going to highlight all of this um, 100 squares I've just put in. Um, you, you know, I really do need to start planning for my future because the way the pensions are in, in the UK at the minute, I don't think I'll be able to retire till I'm 80 or get a state pension till I'm 80. <laughs> so, I, you know, I don't think I've got another like 30 plus years in me um, to work. I really don't. Um, and I would like to have some quality of life when I retire to be able to enjoy myself and do stuff. You know, I don't want to be retiring and then my hands are all arthritic from the amount of stitching that I've done all my life. 
and I can't even pick up a needle and cross stitch anymore. Do you know what I mean? I just don't want that to be the case. So, so yeah, I am getting to the point where I start thinking. So then that links into money, doesn't it? Because, you know, money doesn't make you happy. I'm a big believer of this. Money doesn't buy you happiness. And you can see that from all of those people who have, you know, won lotteries and been incredibly miserable while they've, you know, had all the money. Bear with me while I just pull this camera down a little bit. But I also believe that money can make your life that little bit more bearable and allow you a little bit more freedom. So, yeah, it doesn't bring you happiness. It just brings opportunity, I think, that you might not have otherwise had. Does that make sense? <coughs> I hope it makes sense anyway. Um, next question. Are you always nice to people and do you expect something in return? <sighs> There's a question. Now, yes, I am. I am probably one of the most easygoing people in the world. I, and, I, and I really, really am, you know, I don't expect a lot from people. What I expect is some loyalty and, yeah, I expect some loyalty in return. So, you know, I'm thinking of, let's, I'll do both sort of personal and professional. So I've talked a bit about trust um, from my work perspective at the minute. Now, you know, I've worked for managers in the past who are like some of the worst people in the world and I've dreaded having days where those individuals are out with me and are going to get in my car and are just generally negative, toxic people that I don't want with me. Do, do you know what I mean? Those, those type of people. And then I've had fabulous managers who I've wanted to model myself on and I've always thought if I'm ever a manager that's the type of manager I'd want to be now these people are they're like the fun they're upbeat you know they're very fair but they're also if things aren't going that well they know when to turn on a little bit more um whip and less carrot do, do you know what I mean and I and I like that I like that in people where, I like it when you know what you're getting and then somebody doesn't all of a sudden switch up on you and you think they're your mate and then they're not your friend and then they switch on you. I, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be like that. Um, so, so yes, I am always nice to people, absolutely. But I do expect things in return. For that, I expect some loyalty and some trust. Absolutely, whether that's in a personal life or it's in it's in work life, because that's the least people can do for your kindness. Just and I hope, I hope that makes sense as well. And you don't, ha I don't expect them to buy me things. So if it's linking, if the question's asking, do I expect them to? to like buy me coffee and things like that. No, I don't. Or to pay for my friendship. Absolutely not, I don't. And if I'm in a relationship, I don't expect people because I'm nicer than, you know, for a guy to go and buy me flowers every week or bring me presents. No, I don't. That That's not at all what I'm meaning. But I do expect people to treat me with the same respect that I give them and the same degree of trust that I give them. And when that's taken away, or that's broken, or damaged in some way, then that's when, you know, I will turn around and, you know, be more demanding and put things in place to make that person realise that I'm not a pushover, because I'm really not a pushover, you know. So, you know, I'll give people enough opportunity I really will you know before we get to a point where I need to intervene or do anything you know whether that's work or, or friendship um okay 
let's have a look. Right, if... Okay, then you were to save your family member or your lover from drowning in an ocean. Who do you leave to drown to their death and why? <laughs> well, that's actually quite easy for me. <laughs> because all of my relationships have ended in, in you know, some form of relative disaster. <laughs> so if I put, you know, any of my former relationships in, in this picture, so, you know, there's my mum or my dad, there's in the, in the ocean, there's one life raft, and, you know, it's like a scene out of Titanic where you've got to let somebody sink, you know, I mean, she certainly pushed Leonardo DiCaprio over the edge, didn't she, to save her own life? <laughs> but if there's one life raft, and there's my mum or dad in there, or there's any one of my ex-partners, my ex-partners getting dunked in there, no matter which one it is, they're drowning, and I'm saving my family. Hands, like, no, no qualms. Um, you know, for me, you know, I, I look at my parents, you know, they have supported me all of my life, um, you know, and at the time, maybe when they would need me, 100% I would be there for them to return the favour without the shadow of a doubt, you know, and a relationship is in your life, it could be transient. Would I save somebody who could possibly leave me at some point and, and sacrifice somebody who never would? Yeah, I'm going to pick my parents or family over over that without a shadow of a doubt. And if that makes me a bad person, then, you know, c'est la vie. <laughs> um, let's have a look. I want to go over the page because obviously I'm not going to answer all of these because I would be here for hours. Bear with me while I just flip over the page. Um, I'm just going to clip this back on. Two ticks. Sorry if I'm, you see my arms all over the camera. I don't know what you can see. I'm quite zoomed in. Bear with. Okay. Right, here's one. Here's a really weird one. Let's answer this. I'm just going to mark these stitches off or these tiles off first and then we'll answer this. So the question is while I'm doing this, let me read it while I'm marking this off. Picture the last dead person you know. You have a chance to bring them back to life for an hour, but you lose one year of your life. Will you do it and why? So I'm thinking of the, the, most, the most recent bereavements for my family have been an aunt and an uncle and a cousin. Um, yeah, I would. I definitely would to lose, a, to lose an hour, a, an hour, a year of my life. I really would, um, and I'd and I'd do it because how I would do it, you know, because obviously it's not going to happen, is it? I'm just going to top up my drills a minute. Bear with me while I reach round and and pick up some more of these. Lady, lady back toes. There we go. I'm going to put them in that little cubby there. I think in a in a lot of cases, like. My auntie and my uncle who died had both been ill for some time. Um, and obviously their deaths were not unexpected. Let's just say they had, um, both of them died of, of cancer. And, you know, that them, them dying was, was awfully sad, but it wasn't unexpected. I mean, no death or no loss is, is great, but you know, it wasn't a surprise. And my cousin, on the other hand, um, his death was really unexpected. And I, and I did mention him on a previous, it was either a stitch with me, um, <clears throat> I think it was a stitch with me that I did, and he had a stroke, catastrophic stroke, stroke um, was brain dead before he even hit the floor and, and died, leaving behind a young family. And that was... I think one of the turning points for me to start getting into shape, because obviously my job that I do is quite a sedentary job. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time in the car, driving to meet people, and then being driven by those people when I'm with them. So I do spend a lot of time seated. 
and that was one of the factors that triggered me to get up and start moving at which point I then started to exercise more regularly which I've been doing since and then losing weight and all of the other malarkey um, but this situation was so quick and tragic um, so absolutely and there are a number of aunties and uncles as well as this individual who I would bring back and and I would want like his kids to be there as well and you know the wife he left behind to be there as well just to have that opportunity to say goodbye and tell him you know how much everybody loved him and how important he was you know because with sudden death like that I mean he just went off to work one morning so I'm sure you know you know you kind of look at you know families in general you know we people go out to work on a morning you know you say goodbye to them at the door um, and then they've gone and they leave and you know you, you don't think for one minute as that person sorry I put a tile in the wrong place um, as that person goes out the door that that might be the last interaction you ever have with them and, and I don't know what had gone on in his house that morning you know he's probably had his breakfast you know said bye to his wife I'll see you later you know you know maybe not had chance to really speak to the kids I don't know and then for him never to come back and that be the last time you saw him and I think to you know people who I've lost as well along the way you haven't said a proper goodbye you haven't had that chance and to have a chance to say a proper goodbye tell somebody how much you love them and how much they mean to you I think would be so valuable and I would happily give up a year of my life to to say that to some of the people that have passed and to involve people who have been affected by that person's death also. Um, yeah, this is quite morbid um, and <laughs> negative task tag, isn't it? I didn't realise. <laughs> but but I suppose it sort of puts a, a different slant on things, doesn't it? And it's a different type of conversation, isn't it? It's a bit deeper, isn't it, than oh yeah, um, what do you do for a living and do you have any kids kind of tag, which, you know, obviously I did, I did in the very, very early days while well, you're getting to know people. So yeah, so it is going to be, you know, a little bit deep, isn't it? And um, and darker. But I think I think we know each other well enough for to be able to tackle such issues, don't we? So I don't feel as though, you know, I'm, I'm really bringing in hopefully too much negativity into your Sunday. But yeah. Uh, but I definitely would. Um, let's have a look. Um, there's only a couple left. I'm just trying to think of one. I won't answer that because, again, that's a death one. And it's just like, oh, my God, this is negative, isn't it? Right, I'll answer this one. And this will be the last one I answer. So what is harder for you? Facing someone when telling him or her the way you feel or facing someone when he or she is telling you the way they feel. Now, I've kind of answered the first part of this. Now, I, you know, being, as I said, quite early on, quite an old-fashioned person, I'm not going to be the first person. I'm just marking off my, um, where I've been. I'm not going to be the person who puts it out there and says, I love you, I have feelings for you. Um, that's not going to happen because... You know, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sort of put myself in that situation. <laughs> so you know, it's going to be them who's who's saying it to me. Now, in the past, when this has happened, yeah, I I'm not very good at taking stuff like that. If somebody pays me a compliment, I, I also can't accept a compliment either. I find it really really difficult. So say I'm wearing. A particular outfit for work and somebody says to me oh I like your dress or you know what you're wearing I'll always respond by saying oh thanks yeah no it, it, it was from so-and-so it was it wasn't expensive at all do you know what I mean rather than just saying oh thank you I really appreciate that um I don't I'll kind of flip it into a negative or somebody might say to me god you've lost weight you look really well and I'll be like yeah I've still got a long way to go though 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I can never take a compliment. Oh, I like I like how your your hair's today. Oh, it only took me two minutes. <laughs> this is this is just me to a T. So when somebody is declaring their undying love to me, um, I find it really hard. So I'll give you an example. Um, I was seeing a guy. So this is quite a few years ago. I was only in my early twenties. Um, you know, and this and this was like a bit of a whirlwind. This guy was great. He was like. You know, for, for most people, an absolute dream catch. He really was. I'm not going to tell you anything about him personally, but he was like, he was a dream catch. Um, but he fell for me pretty quick, which unnerved me a little bit. And I remember taking, gosh, my first ever King Charles, Chloe. So Chloe was before Poppy uh, for a walk with him. And we were up in like the local hills, woods, whatever you want to call them, walking, Chloe, and he turned around and he said, you know, stopped me, and he sort of looked at me and he was like, um, I love you, and this was about three weeks into the relationship, and I was just like, you know, when you want to laugh, but obviously this person is just like laid it out there, so you try and, sorry, another small drill, you try not to laugh, um, because... Obviously, he's probably been thinking about this and it's, he's plucked up a bit of courage to do it. But on the other side, it also feels really sudden. And I remember saying to him, no, you don't. No, you don't. And he's like, yeah, I do. And I'm like, yeah, but we've only been together about three weeks. Why don't you tell me when you really mean it? <laughs> Cruel cow, aren't I? And he, he sort of like looked at me and he said, well, I do mean it and I will tell you again. And you, and you know what you think? Oh, yeah, so I couldn't even accept that. I had to put a negative spin on that too and just say, no, you don't. You can't tell me when you mean it. Because I couldn't, for the life of me, believe it that somebody would say something like that so soon. Um... So yeah, I'm just absolutely rubbish at taking any form of niceness from people without having to, like, not reverse it, but just sort of, I don't know, play down a little bit. Does that make sense? I mean, I, I do give people compliments and I always admire people who, who can accept one and say, oh, thank you. Um, no, I, I really appreciate you've said that, do you know what I mean? And not then have to say, oh yeah, but it's not new, or I've had it ages, it's been in the wardrobe for ages, um, kind of attitude. <laughs> I just wish I could be a little bit more, I don't know, um, I can't think of the word. Um, I don't know, welcoming, welcoming of stuff like that, and I don't know. Not always having to sort of offset it. It's not. It's not embarrassment. It is in a way, you know. When I think about it, it is a little bit of embarrassment. I wish I could be a little bit less embarrassed when somebody compliments me. Um, is what I guess I would say. But I feel as though I've made some reasonable progress here, you know, guys. Let me just back this up. We've done quite a bit, you know, in our little short um, session. There's about a good one, two, three, four, maybe 500 uh, tiles that I've laid down here in this session. And I'm just going to look at my watch because I have a feeling we've been going for, oh gosh, well over an hour. So, no wonder my memory card ran out. Um, and I had to delete some content off it. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd come on and say hello to you all. So, I have a birthday on, if you're still here, because <laughs> I might just be talking to myself at the moment. Um, my birthday is on Thursday, so I'm away with work Tuesday night through Wednesday, then I'm home really late on Wednesday night, and then it's my birthday on Thursday. So I thought what I might do is kind of an extended stitch with me um, slash vlog because when I've asked what would you prefer a stitch with me in a vlog I've had pretty much a 50-50 split so I'm going to try and do a stitch with me a little bit different over a period of time because I'm going to work on my chatelaine for a few days 
So for all you Chatelaine fans out there, um, hang fire on that because there's going to be like an extended vlog. It probably won't go up on my birthday, it'll go up, go up over the weekend. Um, but yes, I, um, I'm going to have a birthday this week coming. So I thought, yeah, well, I'll do kind of a Chatelaine stitch with me slash vlog over maybe two or three days um, just to get some decent progress in on that and obviously share with you um, you know my journey of the specialty stitches and things like that because over a few days I'll get to do a little bit more than I would if I was just um, you know stopping by for an hour or so I'm not going to get much done on it so that's the plan so I probably will find another tag to do over a few days maybe um, a little bit of life as it as it happens but it won't be a vlog from the point of view where you see me taking Daisy for a walk I'm not going to do that um, there's a couple of events during that time as well obviously my parents are taking me out for my birthday and I've got a night with my friends so it's not going to be the full shebang um, I'm going to cover this up and stick it back down because I'm going to call it with this um, I'm going to do a little bit of lighthouse work and then I'm going to work on my Chris Ortega steam heart this afternoon in the other room. There we go, I'll cover that up nicely so my sticky doesn't disappear. Um, but yes, I will be doing that uh, and that will probably go up over the course of next weekend, I would imagine. So without further ado, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your lovely comments, your likes, um, your subscribes. I really appreciate your support. It, it really does make doing this type of thing an absolute pleasure because obviously I'm doing it for you. So you take care of yourself, guys, and I will, I'll see you on my birthday on Thursday. So catch you soon. Bye.